then proof. Alright. So a person having more than hundred percent between two hundred percent is called intelligent, and above two percent is called wizard, super intelligent, extremely intelligent, like Albert Einstein. All right. So the Albert Einstein will be categorized in plus two hundred percent IQ. So the idea is this is how IQ gives you a license to get into a job. This will be tested for you to get a job. But to succeed in a job, EQ is required. Everyone can become an IS. I gave you an example yesterday. Everyone has the ability to get into IAS if he or she is having this IQ. But everyone will not be successful IAS if he or she is not having this EQ. So only few IAS comes into national notice of prominence. Why? Because they have. A very high EQ. They have been able to manage their superiors and their subordinates very nicely. I gave an example yesterday. Interpersonal skill. Why is it required? Because you have to manage both your superiors, including your political boss, and as well as your bureaucratic boss, as well as even your subordinates who are below your rank. So there you have to use this EQ. If you are very poor on EQ. You will not be able to survive. You will say, "No, no, I got this. I was given. I resigned. I came. I am not going to do private job. I am not going to do that." This is what actually happens with a lot of people, especially those bureaucrats who finally see that their EQ is not up to the match of the demanded requirement that is demanded. Uh, you can see that they are in the bureaucracy, so they resign. They do not survive. If they don't survive, they remain in some big post. All right, because they are very poor in EQ. So the idea is the success of your career is set by EQ. The entry into your career is set by the IQ. And hence, EQ is today more relevant than the IQ. So 1995 onwards, this concept became very popular. This concept became highly popular among the corporate world or in the corporate world. And even in the bureaucracy as well. So emotional intelligence. The best example to understand is: Have you seen the movie Dhoni? Yes. Sushant Singh Rajput acting as a Mahendra Singh Dhoni. Now that's the best example to understand this person who is M S Dhoni. Now, M. S. Dhoni might not be highly technically sound batsman in Indian team. He is definitely lesser technically equipped than Rahul Dravid. But his name, his fame, has become larger than Rahul Dravid in a short span of time. How? If you have seen that movie, that movie will depict you. I mean, those who watch cricket, they can easily notice the behavior, the responses of Ms. Dhoni on the ground. You might not have seen Ms. Dhoni in a very low mood or in a very highly excited mood. Even he beats matches, even to the extent of World Cup. He was not touring his shirt. He was not throwing his items. He was not dancing on the street, dancing on the on the ground. No, had they have been Saurav Ganguly, or had they have been Virat Kohli, they would have danced on the ground. They would dance on the stadium itself. But he was a Miss Dhoni, who kept his entire. Cool and calmness maintained. That's why he is known as Captain Cool. 
Well, why Captain Cool? Because he controls his emotion very nicely. He has tamed his emotions very nicely. And if you have seen this movie, Dhoni, I will give you one small example to make you understand that how has he controlled his emotions. If you remember in this movie Dhoni, in one of the incidents he was told by his friend that his ex-girlfriend has passed away. He listens very presently and he asks his friend to give him some time. He does not react there. He does not show his emotions there. He says, like I do, just go ahead, I will give some time. He comes out, out of the car, he goes behind the pillar and he cries there. He cries for some minutes and he wipes his, his own eyes and comes out with all normalcy. He says, let's go, we have to play match. Now that one example can give you some insight about what is the meaning of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence means that your emotion should not come in between your goal. Your emotion should be tamed in such a way that your objective is bigger than your emotions. Alright, so your emotion should not play more control over your mind. So your heart should be controlled, mind should not control, the heart should not control the mind. So that movie has depicted very nicely about MS Dhoni and he is the best example to quote in any of the case studies of emotional intelligence. Because neither he comes with the exuberance of happiness or he goes into the moment of deep sadness. Even if he loses a match, he does not cry. He does not show the problem or tension in his face. He remains cool and silent. That is the emotional intelligence. So either you get a huge happiness, should control the emotion. You get a huge loss in life, should control your emotion. And that gives you the license to be a highly successful individual in this country, in this world. If that ability and quality you also ingrained in your personality, you all will be equally highly successful in any of your life's endeavor. Whether you be in bureaucracy or in any other non-bureaucratic field, yet you will be highly successful in your life. So that's what actually is the meaning of emotional intelligence. Fine. So you can write this point. Emotions are understood as emotions are understood as as an agitated emotions are understood as an agitated or excited state of agitated or excited state of our mind and body excited state of our mind and body it has both psychological and physiological psychological and physiological dimensions physiological dimensions a scholar named Charles G. Morris Charles G. Morris Define emotion, define emotion as a complex, as a complex 
affective experience affective a double f e c t i v affective a double f e c t i v e affective experience that involves that involves diffused physiological changes that involves a diffused physiological changes diffused physiological changes and can be expressed can be expressed clearly in one's behavior in one's behavior thus emotions also have abc component like attitudes emotions also have abc component abc component like attitudes abc component matlab affective behavioral and cognitive there is a component like affective behavioral and component ha na for example for example sanjay sees a bull sanjay sees a bull coming towards him sanjay sees a bull coming towards him he experiences he experiences an affective affective an affective experience he experiences an affective experience in the form of in the form of the arousal in the form of the arousal of emotion of fear in the form of the arousal of emotion of fear and he quickly runs away from the bull so it has the example has all the abc component why because he saw a bull he got a sense of fear now that is cognitive aspect the moment he got the fear his face became pale his muscles became stiff and after that that emotions started rising out and after that he runs away from that little spot and that becomes a behavioral part so it has abc component in it itself now read right? on the other hand intelligence is defined as the capacity to acquire capacity to acquire intelligence is defined as capacity to acquire and applied knowledge capacity to acquire and applied knowledge thus emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is all about giving reasons to one's emotions giving reasons giving reasons to one's emotions it involves 
It involves four processes. Emotional intelligence involves four processes. A. To perceive one's emotion. B. B. To integrate it in thought. To integrate it in thought. C. To understand it. And D. To manage it. And D to manage it. According to Aristotle, according to Aristotle, anyone can become angry. That is very easy. Anyone can become angry, that is very easy, but to be angry with the right person, with the right person to the right degree, to the right degree at the right time at the right time for the right purpose for the right purpose and in the right way and in the right way that is not easy that is not easy so what a lovely statement he has made that's perfect in everyone's case in your case in my case in anyone's case we all very easily become angry, that is quite easy. That's obviously very easy. But what is not easy is to understand when to become angry, against whom to become angry, at what degree we have to become angry, at what time we have to become angry, for what purpose we have to become angry, that is quite not easy. And this once you control your anger, that's also part of your emotional intelligence. Alright. Hence, you write the last point. Hence, emotional intelligence as a term coined by term coined by John Mayer and Peter Saravoy John Mayer and Peter Saravoy in 1900 in 1900 which became popular only in 1995 which became popular only in 1995 by by the writings of Daniel Goldman in his book named Emotional Intelligence. 
writings of Daniel Goldman in his book Emotional Intelligence. He very nicely remarked, he very nicely remarked that IQ, that is intelligence quotient, IQ, that is intelligence quotient, is required or is essential to succeed in academics is required to succeed in academics in profession in business in job placements etc in business, in profession, in job placements, etc. But emotional quotient or emotional intelligence is a greater predictor of is a greater predictor predictor is a greater predictor of success in one's life. Get a predictor of success in one's life. Hence, in the corporate world, in the corporate world, and also in bureaucracy, in the corporate world, but also in bureaucracy, also in bureaucracy, the IQ gets you hired. The IQ gets you hired. IQ gets you hired. H I R E D. Hired. But EQ gets you promoted. EQ gets you promoted. Hence, Hence, the academic researches and the training program for the administrators, the academic researches and the training program for the administrators or bureaucrats administrators or bureaucrats have started have started emphasizing upon emphasizing upon the utility has started emphasizing upon emphasizing upon the utility and the utility and its relevancy and the relevancy of EQ EQ more over the IQ more over the IQ alright so there are because there are various benefits of having EQ in a person than the IQ so now the corporate world, they also try to look into that which person actually is having or rather are having more IQs, sorry, more EQs than the IQs and then accordingly they are, they are actually not really high but also they are promoted in the system. So you can see the team leader. If you are working in the corporate world, you perhaps might be knowing about the concept of team leader. Now who actually gets the designation of team leader? A person who is very sharp on the EQ who can actually gel with the person along with whom he has to work and he has to take the work also. So if he or she is very really sharp on EQ, the person is designated as team leader or maybe even a manager in an organization. So EQ is 
the sole criteria today now to get you promoted in any system. So either it's bureaucracy or the corporate world, the EQ matters now. All right. So we'll keep it in here only. In the next class, we'll talk about the significance of the most intelligence and how can it be a useful tool for making bureaucracy more efficient and effective in our country. All right. That's the second aspect which is left there. So what we can do is we can do the next aspect. See you then again in the next class. Thank you.